patch 9.19, the world's patch, just dropped a few days ago and as always, people are trying a lot of new stuff out. Today we're going to be going over some of the picks that you need to be abusing for some quick and easy elo. If you haven't already, make sure to check out our website, GameLeap.com. There we have hundreds of guides, all done by challenger players, sorted into a quick and easy to use courses system. We do have courses both on the five fundamental roles as well as champion specific courses, so if that is something that interests you, make sure to check us out using the link in the description below. We're going to start with the most diverse role at the moment, top lane. Now there is a ton of stuff that is viable top lane right now. You could pick a ranged champion like Vayne or Kennen, you could pick a tank like Maokai or Malphite, or you could pick a bruiser. The best pick this patch, however, for climbing the ladder is going to be Darius. Darius works in almost every single situation. He's really good into tanks, he's okay into ranged champions and can survive them, and he beats most bruisers. With the Fiora and Riven buffs coming through, a lot more people are going to be playing those two champions, and Darius is a fantastic response to those picks. His early laning is strong and he scales really well later on into the game as well. The only champions that Darius really isn't able to deal with all too well are the Spear of Shojin champions like Jax and Renekton. These champions are hard for him to deal with because they bully heavily in the early lane phase so they are able to stand up to Darius early on into the lane, but they outscale him so hard. In order to win these matchups specifically, you are going to need experience, and if you still are new or uncomfortable with these matchups, I would highly recommend banning either of these two champions, if you play Darius. Once you do have enough experience in these matchups, you should be able to win them because, again, they are skill matchups. Now, one of the other reasons why Darius is so good at the moment is because he's one of the few champions that excels at 1v2ing. Right now, top lane is not in a very good state for solo carrying. You can do really well in a one-on-one -on -one lane, but if your bot lane loses, your chances of winning the game are not going to be as good. Darius is one of the few champions that does so well in a 1v1 that the jungler is often forced to respond. He's also very good at 1v2ing though, and if he gets 5 stacks off on either of the targets, then he's likely going to be scoring a double kill. Plays like these tremendously increase your chances of winning a game and are the reason why Darius is my number one pick for top lane this patch. Moving our way into the jungle this patch, our pick to solo carry is going to be Kha'Zix. Kha'Zix is honestly so disgustingly strong at the moment. He has three different evolution paths and builds that are all viable at the moment, meaning he can fit into every single game. His clear speed and sustain in the jungle are unmatched, and he can go from 100 HP all the way to full HP with just a few camps very quickly. This allows him to have presence on the map that is pretty hard to match since he only needs to base if all of his camps are down or he needs to buy. Kha'Zix is one of the highest tempo junglers in the game, but he's not hard to play. He doesn't need to sacrifice farm in order to gank. And on top of that, he's also able to do objectives really, really quickly, like Dragon and Herald. There are other champions that also can do this, however, for example, Nunu. The reason why Kha'Zix is our number one pick is because his solo carry potential is so much higher than any other jungler in the game right now. On top of having good tempo and objective control, he does insane amounts of damage, he's very mobile, and he's super slippery. Assassins are very strong at the moment due to how strong AD carry is. Kha'Zix can quickly take out the enemy ADC from a fight and then move on to any other priority targets that might exist. A good Kha'Zix will oftentimes be able to kill the ADC, the mage, and the support in one team fight. He can do all of this with little to no counterplay from the enemy team most times. There are not very many champions that have the tools in their kit in order to survive a Kha'Zix. In order to survive a Kha'Zix, you need to play as a team and prevent yourself from isolating, something that just doesn't happen in the vast majority of ELOs. If you have not already, I highly recommend picking up Kha'Zix for the jungle because he is going to be your ticket for free ELO. Now for mid lane, we're going in a completely opposite direction. Our mid laner is going to be the terror that no assassin player ever wants to play against. I'm talking about Malzahar. 
Now, Malzahar is the ultimate pick when it comes to countering assassins, and usually you're going to be seeing at least one assassin in any given game. Not only is Malzahar good at countering assassins though, he's also very very strong into various control mages, and he's just strong as a safe mid laner in general. Really, Malzahar's only weakness is artillery mages, things that can outrange him without him ever getting an opportunity to lay damage down. However, again, due to the popularity of assassins, these long-range mages that have little to no mobility or survivability in their kits just aren't being played. Malzahar is going to be a fantastic pick for about 90% of the matchups that you're currently going to be facing. Farming is very easy and straightforward on him in the laning phase and it's very safe for him to do because he can just put E down on a minion, throw down his minions, and then step back. This makes it very hard to gank Malzahar because he's constantly going to be under his tower with his passive up and his ultimate and that's not really something that you are going to want to look for in a gank as a jungler. Ganking for Malzahar though is one of the best feelings in the game. All Malzahar has to do is press R on the target and you're likely going to end up with a kill if your jungler has a high amount of damage in their kit. Similar to his ganking setup, Malzahar's teamfighting is also very good. He forces high priority targets to purchase a QSS, and if they don't purchase one, then they're likely just going to die during the suppression duration. Even for those targets that are buying QSS, this is a huge investment. It's 1300 gold, the same amount as a BF sword. This is a huge setback for most carry champions because without that gold, they're not going to be able to back up their team as much with all of that damage that they would normally have. On top of this, once they do buy the QSS, Malzahar's likely just to swap onto a different high priority target with their ultimate. This makes it so that multiple different targets on a single team are going to have to buy QSS in order to deal with Malzahar. If they opt not to buy QSS, then their team fighting impact is going to be lowered drastically, and oftentimes they're just going to die without doing anything at all. For this reason, purchasing QSS into Malzahar has been dubbed the Malzahar tax. Playing against Malzahar is a lose-lose situation, and that is why he is so good at the moment. Now moving on to ADC, our pick once again this patch is going to be Zaya. Zaya is a very, very strong ADC at the moment, and one of the few that can DPS an entire team at once. Now, again, as I mentioned earlier on in this video, assassins are very popular this patch, and Zaya is one of the few ADCs that does a really good job of surviving into most assassins. Not only does she have good survivability, her mobility is pretty good, she has a good attack speed steroid, she has CC in her kit, her range is very, very good. The only downside about Zaya's kit is that you can stack armor into it because she only does physical damage. She can sometimes struggle into hyper tanks like Malphite, but again, those are just not that popular in this meta. The only thing to really be watching out for when you are locking in Zaya is to play very carefully into lane bullies like Caitlyn or Draven because these champions can beat you in the laning phase and if you lose the lane phase too hard as ADC, you may never have a chance to come back. If these matchups are too difficult for you, then you always have the option of banning them out. Now, last but not least, on to support. This patch, there are a ton of really strong supports at the moment, but the one that takes the cake above all of them right now is going to be Blitzcrank. Now, if you are not already playing Blitzcrank, you need to start doing so. The reason behind this is very, very simple. Blitzcrank is a hook champion, he's very, very good at picking out enemy champions. Picks are the best way to transition into an objective in the late game, like Baron or Dragon. However, since Blitzcrank is such an old champion, most people do have experience playing against him, and they know his range. All of this was thrown out the window this patch after the buff to Blitzcrank's Q range. 
I guarantee you that in most games that you play right now, people are not going to know Blitzcrank's new Q range, meaning you can abuse this champion for free ELO. It's only going to take you a few games to learn what Blitzcrank's Q range is, and it's going to take the rest of the community that isn't spamming Blitzcrank at least a week or two before they learn it. For the people who don't play as much or don't keep up with the patch notes, they're not even going to know that Blitzcrank's Q changed in range. You're going to be able to abuse Blitzcrank for months at the very least, which will allow you to get so many free wins. So if you haven't already, be sure to pick up Blitzcrank. My recommendation is to ban Morgana if you are going to play Blitzcrank. Now his ultimate does break Morgana's shield, but his Q range is longer than his ultimate's range. There are very few other champions that are going to be as annoying to play against as Morgana if you are locking in Blitzcrank, so I would just ban that and lock in Blitzcrank if you can get it. Remember that by playing a lot of Blitzcrank and learning the new range on his Q, it's also going to help you learn how to play against him. Normally I would recommend Pike as my hook champion, but right now Blitzcrank is just too good to pass up on. Now that does just about do it for today's video on the 5 champions that you need to be abusing for quick and easy elo. If you haven't already, make sure to check out our website, GameLeap.com. There we have hundreds of guides, all done by challenger players, sorted into a quick and easy to use courses system. We have courses both on the 5 fundamental roles, as well as champion specific courses, so if that is something that interests you, make sure to check it out using the link in the description today. I've checked out a lot of the content on there myself personally, and I can honestly say it is all really high quality. If your main goal is to improve, our website is one of the best learning tools out there for you. Sign up today to start improving your play. As always, I'm Panther, I hope you learned something valuable, and I will see you in the next one.